Hi everyone, Fide Master Dennis Montecrucis here, and today we're going to take a look at a game that most likely isn't in the databases. I think it was just rediscovered by Ray Keen, and um, he just published this. A friend of mine pointed it out to me, uh, Brian Karen, and as a result, uh, well, I, I replayed it. I like it. It's actually a very, very interesting game with quite a few instructive moments and remarkably well played for a blitz game. So the uh, contestants in this game are Mikhail Tall and Boris Bosky, so two former world champions, both great, exciting players. So I, I think it's absolutely worth a look. So this was played in, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, uh, Glen Rothes. It's, uh, I believe, in Scotland, G-L-E-N-R-O-T-H-E-S. This was a blitz tournament in 1988, and I think this was the last round game. And coming into it, Mikhail Tall was half a point ahead of Spassky. So Spassky needed to play for a win, obviously, if he wanted to, to fight for first. Okay, so Tall had white, and let's see how things went. So Spassky chose the Peerts, which he did even in tournaments on occasion. So it's not, it wasn't just that he was playing this because it was a last-round game that he needed to win, although it's not a bad choice for that kind of scenario either. But it actually was an occasional part of his repertoire. Okay, well, Tall played the, the most aggressive line. He played the Austrian attack. And now this line with bishop to b5 check. And, um, okay, e6. Now, this line was considered to be especially strong back then. Um, and the main line at the time was bishop takes b5, which is what Spassky played. It was thought that f takes e6 was not so good because of knight to g5, and then on bishop takes b5, which was... Um, you know, the only move that really made a whole lot of sense, I think, or was considered to be the obvious principled move. Knight takes e6 looked like a complete disaster for black. Both bishops are hanging, so these guys are both under attack. The knight on g4 hangs to the queen. And, of course, black's queen is hanging. And not e and it's not even that. I mean, as if that's not enough, there's also the further problem that if white plays knight c takes b5, well, only knight takes b5, then there's uh, a further threat to check on c7 and pick up the rook in the corner. So it looked as if this was just an utter disaster for Black to play in this way. But Sierra won in a game against Gula Sachs earlier that year. Actually, I'm not sure if it's earlier that year. It may have been, but I, I'm not positive. Uh, in Brussels in 1988 in a slow tournament, found a very good move for Black here. He found the best way for Black to handle the position. So what do you think it is? Probably some of you already know this. I mean, certainly if you play the Peerts or you play the Austrian attack against it, I, I'm sure you know it. But... Many of you um, will be discovering this for the first time yourself. So what did Sir Juan come up with in his home prep? It's not hard to find once you know there's something there, but there were no computers, of course, or no computers worth speaking of back in that, at that time available to, to individuals. And, um, and of course, you know, he had to have the, uh, the creativity to stop and even get to this position and think about it. Anyway, what he found, of course, as you've probably all discovered by now for yourself, is bishop takes d4. So this saves the bishop from g7, and if white takes the queen, well, it's an immediate draw. Check, check, and game over. And of course, uh, needless to say, chess players who won a day off have um, used this on many, many occasions since since then. Now, this is how the sack zero one game ended, but of course it can be used um, for people not playing it for the first time. Anyway, white can continue to play, though. He doesn't have to play knight takes d8, although maybe tall would have played in that way if it, you know, if um, this was known at the time, as it would have clinched the tournament victory for him. But if tall had wanted to continue to play, he could have played knight takes b5. And now, I would say perhaps the most principled variation for both sides continues like this. Queen a5 check, queen d2, bishop f2 check. Uh, the point is that black wants to take the knight on b5 so he can alleviate this pressure against c7. Of course, he can't take the knight on b5 right away because knight c7 check would pick off his queen. So he has to arrange things so he can take it with check. So that's what this is all about. Bishop to f2 check. If the king goes to e2 or f1, then obviously queen takes b5, so king to d1. And now knight e3 check. Well, this forces the, the, uh, the white king to e2, but now the bishop on f2 is, is hanging. So queen b5, king f2. Knight g4 check, king g3, and this is something of a, a tabia for the variation. And um, here, white or black has tried three moves at least. Uh, he's tried queen to d7, which protects c7 and counterattacks the knight on e6. He's played king to d7, which does the same thing. And then perhaps best, certainly a very interesting move here, is knight to a6. This covers c7, like the other two moves, 
but it leaves the knight on e6 alone. So you might wonder, well, why not king takes g4? Well, queen d7, of course, rook e1, knight c7, and now, for instance, after queen to e2, king f7, f5, you might wonder for a moment, is um, is white getting away with something? Is he is he going to keep his extra piece? Well, I think g takes f5 check is more or less forced. King takes f5. And now, one possibility that's kind of interesting is rook a to f8. And um, the idea is that if white were to play something like queen to h5 check, which looks really strong at first sight, black plays king to g8, and that's check <laughs> as well. So uh, next move, black regains the piece, and... Um, he can defend without too much difficulty. In fact, black is better here. But not not winning, and also white can maybe do better than queen to uh, h5 check. However, in this position, black can win with rook a to g8. And the point is just to continue with rook to g6. And here, obviously, the white king is not really brilliantly placed on f5. He's not keeping his extra piece. So uh, this is, in fact, uh, a great position for black. Black will win. Okay, um, so f5 is wrong here, but okay, the point is that black gets his piece back and, and stands well. All right, um, now that doesn't mean that white should play king takes g4 here. So again, there are plenty of places to, uh, to dig around for improvements. I believe the main moves here are rook to e1 and b3. So those are both possible as well, and you can have, um, have fun exploring this variation. It's very interesting. Anyway, going back though to e6. Black did not play f takes e6, but traded or took on b5 straight away. Okay, e takes f7 check. And here black does not play king takes f7, or rarely does because knight g5 check, queen g4 becomes an option, and the knight jumps into e6 as well. So the pretty well overwhelming choice here is king to d7. All right, white takes on b5, recapturing or regaining his piece. Queen a5 check, knight c3, c takes d4, knight takes d4. All right, so white's still up a pawn, but the f7 pawn is going to fall sooner or later, and um, and really we'll have to evaluate that end game or end game that that middle game. Uh, from here, black has two main moves. In the game, Spassky played bishop takes d4, but it's also possible to play h5, and indeed this has happened in other games. Um, yeah, not Spassky. Spassky played bishop takes d4 on a previous game on a previous occasion. Uh, I don't think he ever played h5 though. Anyway, a uh, possible continuation here is h3, knight c6, knight d to e2, and now the knight goes to h6 with the idea of dropping into f5. And this is a very important idea for black. After bishop b3, knight f5, bishop f2, rook a to f8, castles, rook f7. Maybe white has a very small advantage, but it's a it's a quite a playable position for black too. And his king's not really in danger. I mean, he can go to c8 and um, hide out over on the queen side without too much danger, at least, headed for him in the uh, the immediate future. Uh, I do want to point out one thing, though, in case you were curious. From here, um, white should not play knight takes c6. So this attempt to be greedy will backfire quickly. For instance, bishop takes c3 check. And here, we'll see a big problem with white having played h3, namely after bc, queen c3, bishop to d2. Queen g3 check is just game over. Obviously, king f1, queen f2 is mate, and king e2, queen g2 is not much better. If the king goes back to e1, obviously he gets mated. But on king to d3, knight f2 check, picks up the queen, completely winning position. For black, obviously. Okay, so, as I said, knight d to e2 would be the main move there. Anyway, instead of h5, Spassky plays bishop takes d4. And um, you might feel a little hesitant about that, but in fact, this bishop... It's not such a. It's a good piece, but it's not not so fantastic that it can't be exchanged off. White starts where bishop, well, his only bishop, is not a very good piece either, at least not for the foreseeable future. So bishop takes d4 is at least a way of developing very rapidly. It gets everything into the action. Okay, queen c4, and now here the main move is queen to b6, threatening queen f2 check, obviously. Uh, white plays queen to e2, and now black can either play knight f6. Uh, if he does this, then bishop to d2 followed by queenside casting is probably slightly better for white. Or black can play h5. And then white is chosen here between at least three moves. There's um, h3, again trying to kick the invader out. Bishop to d2 preparing queenside castling. 
and also the uh, aggressive knight to e4. It's uh, it's a very sharp way to play, but White's maybe hoping to put the knight on g5, which would um, protect the f7 pawn and maybe make some possibilities with the e6 square too. So it's a very sharp move. Anyway, you can investigate the theory of all of this on your own. I'm just uh, laying out some of the options here. Instead of queen to b6, Spassky played rook h to f8. So he wants to round up this f-pawn before anything bad happens uh, on account of it. Okay, bishop to d2, just preparing a castle, and also at least hinting at some discovered possibilities against the queen. So Spassky plays queen f5, getting out of the way, hitting c2, and of course preparing to uh, recoup the pawn on f7. All right, h3, driving the knight back, generally a good idea. And of course, if he wants to castle queenside, he doesn't want to allow knight to f2, forking the rooks. Now, um, this position has occurred before in Spassky's practice. So in, in our game, he played knight to h6. And the idea of this is not to take on f7 with the knight, of course, but to bring the knight to f5 at some moment. That's, that's what he's hoping for. In an earlier game against Jan Timmen, played in, in Tilburg in a slow game, back in 1981, he played knight f6. And he did go on to lose, but not because of this. I mean, the position after this was only very slightly better for white. And um, indeed, Spassky managed to equalize later on, but got ground down. I mean, it was like 80-something moves. Let me see. Yeah, it's an 86-move game, and we're only on move 19 here for white coming up. Um, in this position, I think white should seriously consider a3. It's not a bad little prophylactic move. Um, Tippmann played rook h to e1, and anyway, like I said, Spassky was gradually able to equalize before, again, gradually getting ground down. But this, I think, is how black should play this variation. Now, the reason why I think white should be slightly better here in most positions like this is on account of the black pawn islands. And this, I think, is a salient feature of the position that we should focus on a little bit. So a pawn island, of course, is any collection of pawns that kind of stands alone with respect to other pawns. So here, white has two pawn islands. So these guys are all in adjacent files, and these guys are all in adjacent files. So there are two pawn islands there. Black has three. So these guys are off by themselves, these guys are off by themselves, and then these two as well. Now, <clears throat> the reason why it can be a little bit of a drawback to have more pawn islands than your opponent is that you can arrange your pawns in many cases, so that way all except for one is protecting, all, all the pawns are protecting each other except for maybe one. And so that means that at the maximum, you'll only have one, or, or let's say there could be a situation where you have only one pawn that's, at least in principle, um, susceptible to attack by the enemy pieces. Well, the more pawn islands, the more potential targets you've got. Um, it also becomes harder to advance them, in part because uh, there will always be a backward pawn, or a potentially backward pawn, when you've got at least islands of two here like this. Secondly, if you walk into some pawn tension, if you walk into a pawn exchange, then there's going to be an isolated pawn. So with all of these these um, islands, especially the island in the center, and an island where white's got two open files, I mean, this is, is very clearly a potential problem for black. Now, the, uh, the benefit sometimes of having these extra pawn islands is that you have, let's say, a more diverse array of, of open files. So here, white's open files are together. They're on the same line, or same line, same sector of the board. Well, black could, in principle, have play on the C file, on the F file, and, and spread out white's defensive, um, defensive resources. But here, the central files are more important, and I think for this reason, white has an edge. OK, well, let's get back to the game. So with h3, after h3, black Spassky played knight to h6 this time, hoping to get the knight on f5, where it would be very well placed. I mean, uh, it, it would eye the d4 square, g3, e3, maybe sometimes h4. So a lot of a lot of uh, potential there with the knight being able to uh, get to f5. The question is whether he can achieve it. OK, tall castle queenside. And I think white has a, a more substantial advantage this time than in the other game. Um, there was one predecessor that had made it to this point. Um, back then. This is a game between a couple of IMs. Uh, Bednarski, who I think is best known for losing a very, very quick game to Fisher in some tournament, and uh, Black was a player named Payev, and this was played in Lublin in 1975. So there, Black played rook a to c8, which is okay. Rook h to e1, queen f7, and now knight to d5. And you can already see 
White is taking aim on the central files. e6, knight to b4, queen f5, knight to d3, and so far black has played okay. Um, maybe even a little bit better than white, but now he goes astray. He probably needed to play queen to d5, and it's an easy move to not want to make. I mean, who wants to, uh, to give themselves double isolated pawns on an open file? But nevertheless, this would have been the best chance. And, and white would have been better, that's true, but, but black would actually stand very well in every respect except for those pawns. And, and well enough that while he's worse, it, it wouldn't be anything catastrophic at this point. Understandably, though, he wanted to, um, to get a better version of that. So he played b5. Now, of course, queen to b3 would be bad because of knight to d4, and c2 is dropping. So queen to c3, and now queen to d5, which is also a mistake, but consistent. So this looks good because it hits g2, it hits a2. What could be finer? Well, the problem starts showing up pretty rapidly. Queen to g7 check. All right, uh, black doesn't want to surrender a piece here, although it might be his best bet. Let's play something like rook f7, queen h6, queen a2, and just hope for some desperate attacking possibilities. But he played knight f7, which is really the understandable natural move. But now, after bishop to c3, we see these, these files, in the, well, the rooks operating in, in all their glory here, down the central files. Knight to e5 check, winning the queen is an obvious threat, and um, no doubt there are more evils befalling black in the near future. So he played king to e8, so knight e5 at least won't come with check. Oh, and if, um, if queen takes a2, okay, I think, well, let me see. Knight e5 check looks pretty good, but knight c5 looks like an even more obvious move. And uh, certainly it wins material here. Can't take. If he plays king e7, then rook takes e6. If nothing else, is is just crushing. So you think he's got to play king c7. Well, but knight e6 check is winning a rook. Queen a1 is just a dead end for black. So this is obviously completely hopeless. So he played king to e8. All right, and now just a little time out. King to b1 takes care of any of this a2 baloney. And now knight to e5 is threatened and other good moves too. So knight c to d8, trying to overprotect the knight and the pawn on e6. Knight e5, queen takes g2. Uh, here probably white's best was rook takes d6, with the point that on knight d6, queen d7 is mate. That would have been unpleasant for black. But knight to g4 isn't bad either, and the game ended like this. b4, f5. Okay, kind of a fun move there. Um, Okay, of course, black can't play gf because of a knight f6 check, and then queen takes on g2. All right, he played rook c3, and probably bc3 would have been pretty similar. So knight f6 check, king e7, knight to d7 check, king d7, f takes e6 check, knight e6, rook takes e6. Okay, white's up a rook for two pawns here, so if black doesn't uh, take the rook, he's just dead lost. He's also threatened by queen f8. He's also threatened by rook to e7 check. So he took, but then knight f4, and he loses his queen, and understandably resigned here. So that was a massacre, and that shows how dangerous these central files are. All right, black was uh, certainly no Boris Bosky, but not a bad player. I mean, the guy's rating was 24-25. Very respectable, um, you know, international master strength player. Okay, so Spassky did better. He played queen takes f7. Well... What does white want to do? Again, we know what black wants to do, so he wants to stop it. So queen to b5 is a good move. The black king is not really happily placed at the moment, so there's... Uh, while white could have traded queens and maybe played g4 next, why trade queens? So queen to b5, rook a to b8, and now g4. So the knight doesn't get to f5 after all. All right, Spassky played a6, and then knight to g8. So the knight's going to go to f6. Okay, what should white do now? Now, you might think about something like g5, but that's creating kind of a gap on f5. It, it might be playable, but, um, you know, you maybe don't want to rush to play something like that. Anyway, uh, Tall found another way to do it. So he played bishop to e3. So it activates the bishop. It clears the d file for the rook on d1. And the further point is that when Spassky then played knight to f6, of course, he could have gotten there two moves faster, instead of jumping all around in circles, uh, now Tal played g5. So, uh, thanks to bishop to e3, knight to d5 is impossible, as white has both the knight and the rook covering the square. 
So the knight goes to h5, and now it can still slowly go back on its way to f5, but again, at a considerable loss of tempi. All right, now Tal played knight to d5, and here Spassky did not play knight to g7, which looks natural, but perhaps it's, it's a bit too extravagant. So after something like king to b1, knight f5, and rook h to e1, white's initiative is extremely dangerous. I mean, uh, the knight on f5 is not a badly placed piece, but the real problem is that there are all kinds of sacrificial possibilities coming up against uh, these pawns. And um, I don't think black is going to survive here for very long. So he tried queen to f5, and this is at least an attempt at a little bit of activity, and also, more, more importantly, perhaps, uh, it clears f7 for the rook to help defend on e7. So um, Spassky is trying to cross as much trouble as he can. Also, maybe the rook will come to c8 at some point, and there could be at least some chances for play against c2. At least that's the idea. All right, Tall plays rook h to e1. And already you can see, I mean, there are ideas here, like bishop to a7, uh, with the possibility of rook takes e7. Although, if the rook's on e8, it, can, it, it defends against that. But we can already see that this, this kind of thing is lurking in the, uh, in the air. Or another idea, kind of similarly, is bishop to b6. All right, threatening rook takes e7 once again. And if rook, to, um, to rook from b to e8, then maybe knight c7 followed by knight e6. And maybe the knight jumps to, to c5. Anyway, these kinds of things are just going to show up time after time for black, and it's very unpleasant to defend. So rook f7 is a good move. The rook, rather than the queen, protects e7, which is important because if the bishop's out of the way, rook takes e7 check would be great if the queen were on f7 rather than the rook. All right, so here Tal finds a, an interesting idea. He plays bishop to a7, again to clear the, um, the e-file, but also trying to do two things. So he wants to drive the rook to a worse square, and he's keeping, or he's making the uh, the b pawn a little bit loose. Now, uh, Black's best move, very paradoxically, might be rook to c8 at this point, and it looks really kind of uh, you know looks like a blunder. But after knight to b6 check, king c7 takes takes. Let's say bishop to e3 to protect the important f4 pawn, and then Black takes on h3. And White's material advantage is not not without value by any means, but it's, uh, it's going to be tough for him to convert this. His bishop is not very good. Black's knights will, will be very good blockaders. Uh, I think the main thing that White still has going for him, besides the small material advantage, is again, all these pawn islands, I mean, they can become vulnerable. The, the position of the, uh, the black position is kind of gappy. So, you know, there are holes on b6, possibly on e6. Uh, White might use the long dark square diagonal to, to, pen to uh, penetrate with his queen. So I think all in all, that gives white some, some good prospects still. But, but black is not, not really in that bad of shape here. All right. Um, in the game, Spassky played rook b to f8, which is very natural. The rooks are protecting each other. There's no forks coming up. But um, now I think white had a very nice chance that he missed. And it's, it's kind of funny that he missed it because it's, uh, it's a typical tall kind of move. So the best move here, I think... And, of course, you should pause the recording if you're trying to find it for yourself. The best move, I think, is rook to e5. So the, the black queen is just about trapped. I mean, there's only a queen takes h3 and taking the rook to look at. So let's start with queen h3. On this, white brings the rook to e3. And the whole point of the operation was to give up the pawn, yes, but now the rook is in play in a big way. So if e7 is adequately guarded, let's move on to another target. Now, for instance, if king to c8, well, another little rook maneuver. Rook to c3, threatening to take on, on c6. King d7. Now queen to b3, so we keep poking and prodding in there. And after, for instance, b5, now it collapses. Rook takes c6. Queen c3 check. And I believe it's a forced mate here. So uh, clearly if king to b7, then is queen to c7 check, followed by knight to b6 mate. If king to d7, then queen c7. And again, it's, it's an easy forced mate. I'll let you guys work that out for yourself. It's not too tough. Um, so queen takes h3 is not really a good idea. So a better move is d takes e5. Giving up the queen, but for a fair amount of material in, in return. So knight e3 check, king c7, takes, takes. Maybe bishop to c5. I mean, we, we do have to save the bishop, which was under attack. And uh, rook takes f4, queen to b3. 
and certainly white has an advantage here, but again, it's not huge. Uh, black's material compensation is sufficient. He's got a rook, knight, and a pawn for the queen, or you could say a rook, two knights, and a pawn for the queen and bishop. Um, on the other hand, he's got some pawn weaknesses. Obviously, the e-pawns are weak, and he's got a little bit of a dark squared problem, but his rooks are active, so white's better, but black still has chances to, to hold the game. Okay, so rook e5, I think, was best. Uh, he played queen to b3, which is not a bad move, and it quickly bore fruit. Here, black needed to play king to c8, and it's a little surprising that, that Spassky didn't play this. Um, maybe he was worried about queen to b6, or I, I'm not sure what, but um, probably, probably he was worried about the b6 square sooner or later being important. But, okay, bishop to e3, king b8, maybe king to b1 or rook to d3, and, and white is definitely better, but but not, not close to winning by any means. After b5, though, I mean, black has taken away the b6 square from, from, a, from, from, sorry, from the white queen for the foreseeable future, but their brand new weaknesses and Tall immediately sets about exploiting them. So white's move, what should he do now? Of course, the bishop on a7 is hanging, but Tall being Tall, of course, is not overly concerned with that. The initiative and the attack are more important, and so he plays queen to a3. Now, if knight takes a7, queen a6, and the knight's basically going to drop off. I mean, clearly it, it falls immediately in this position. Actually, the, the black king is going to fall very quickly, too. Um, if knight to c8, now what? See, queen to b7 check is not mating here. King e8 and the queen on f5 covers the knight. But white has the same trick again, rook e5. And here again, if, um, well, okay, if, if queen takes h3, I suspect that f5 will, will decide. And if de, then queen b7 check. Okay, if the king goes to the e-file, knight c7 is mate, either, either king to e-file move. If the king goes to, um, sorry, if the king goes to d8, then check, and check, and mate, rather banal. And finally, if king to d6, this one's a little bit more stylish, check check, and mate. So that one's kind of pretty. Anyway, the bottom line is that knight takes a7 is, uh, is no-go. a5 is a better move, I think. Certainly better than knight takes a7, but after bishop to e3, again, the, uh, the black queen side is not going to stay intact, and uh, white will crash through and win. Still, that would have been a better try. Uh, in the game he played, knight takes f4. Okay, and so now what does tall do? Do we take on a6? Well, then you got to calculate knight takes d5, queen to b7 check, knight c7. That may be a dead end. So the answer is we take on e7. This is a crusher. All right, of course, black cannot play knight takes e7 because of queen to d6 check, and, um, and good things are going to happen, at least to him, not, not to his opponent. So king e8, queen d8 is made, of course, and if king to c8, then what do we do? Probably just rook takes. Well, you can maybe even take on a6. Yeah, I would be su very surprised if we can't play queen takes a6 here. But even if you can't, I'm sure rook e7 will be sufficient as well. So that would take care of that. Um, what else? Knight takes a7. Then here, again, probably rook takes and queen a6 is good. Oh, no, no, what am I saying? Yeah, just this, because now there's no king to c8, so this is just 8 and 2. All right, so in the game, Spassky played b4, cutting off the uh, the line to d6. Now, uh, Tall missed a nice move, so he had a better move than what he played. And again, it's a little surprising that he missed it, but, you know, it is blitz. got to give these guys a, a bit of a break. So Tall could have played rook takes d6, because on king d6, knight f5 comes with check. And if the king goes to the... Um, to the c-file, then rook c6 is check. If the king goes to the e-file, then knight takes c6 is a discovered check. And even if it weren't, knight takes c6, b takes a3, rook to d8 would be made. So you don't even need the discovered check there for that to win. All right, well, in the game, he played queen takes a6, and it's still basically a mop-up operation after this. Rook e7, queen to b7 check, and he gets his piece back, and whites up a pawn with a great position and winning a second pawn as well. Um, if queen to e6, queen takes b4, and it's two pawns up. Black can't play eight, 
can't take on a2 because d6 is hanging. So he played knight to e6. And now another fun move the tall missed, bishop to c5. I mean, he found lots of nice moves, but, you know, it's these uh, picturesque rook e5 and uh, rook d6 and bishop c5 moves would have been would have been cool for him to have made as well. Anyway, he played bishop to d4, which is certainly very good. The bishop's going to go on f6, where it's very well placed. And uh, again, black's position is ultimately hopeless. Spassky played rook to f5, getting his rook outside the bishop. But after queen b4, knight g5, takes, takes, queen d6. This rook ending is forced, and with two extra pawns, uh, black really had no chance. So let's see how, how uh, tall finished. All right, probably rook to a5 would have been best, aiming to uh, hold up the pawns as long as possible. But he checked, checked, and now played h5, a4, g5, a5. Pass pawns must be pushed. Rook g3, rook d3, and now rook to g1. So he black deactivated white's rook slightly, but again here it's it's just too slow to matter. B4, king e6, b5. Black's king can't really help out. It's cut off by the rook. So rook a1, and now king to b4. And if black keeps checking, white just plays king c5, king b6, and then pushes the a-pawn some more. So black uh, heads over to the king side, but it's just easy. B6, G4, takes, takes, and um, all right. I'm not really sure why Spot, why Tall didn't just play B7. Well, okay, it's been a, a long and interesting game, so it's it's just time trouble. Of course, uh, Rook to B1 check, Rook to B3 is the end. So he played King to B5, King F4, B7, check, and again you can just play Rook to B3, but played King to C6. It doesn't matter. G3 gets rid of that. A6, A7, Queen, and um, and here Spassky resigned, or maybe his flag fall, uh, flag fell. Anyway, a very nice game by Tall. Of course, you know, not not perfect. You know, wasn't wasn't of a, a slow tournament standard, but it was still a very very well played game. Really, only one big mistake in the game, and that was Spassky's B5 here, in a position that was still tenable but but precarious. So B5 after B5, uh, Queen A3 was winning. Again, Spassky needed to play King C8, but still he was under serious pressure. So I think a, a good game, one that I think is of theoretical value and one that helps to uh, helps us to understand this variation somewhat better. Uh, I think the theoretical conclusion to draw is that in this position, the uh, the plan of Knight H6, aiming to put the Knight on F5, is too ambitious. Uh, white plays G4, and Black ends up losing a lot of time uh, with the Knight, and that that gives White time to build up his his queen side and central attacking chances. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I think this should prove useful for those of you who play the Peerts. I, I think there's quite a bit of good information in it, and, uh, and it's also useful for those who play, play against it with white using the Austrian attack. All right, so hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.